Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Altibox Norway Chess Tournament and this time I would like to show you the game from round 8 where Magnus Carlsen as white gonna play against Arjan Tari and uh, this game, I choose this game because it's the, really the masterclass and a very thematic one so uh, important for everyone to know that game maybe it's gonna be even in the books in the future you know, about the, the chess strategy Strategy. Uh, and why is that? Uh, without further ado, let's see uh, what happened on the board. Now we have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, so Rui Lopez on the board, nothing fancy so far. We have a6, bishop e4, knight f6, uh, and now castle. Uh, and it looks like black would take the, this pawn. It's of course possible, but it's not the winning the pawn, uh, because after d4, which is the main line here, uh, of course, this knight can be taken and then this pawn is hanging uh, so rather b5 uh, and after bishop b3 then d5 this is the, the main line here i mean this is the sideline of course so uh mostly the players don't go for that uh, bishop e6 knight b2 d2 and the game can continue However, we have the main line, like real main line, and we have bishop e7. Uh, and here again, if white takes the bishop too early, uh, d takes on c6, knight e5, then knight simply takes on uh, e4. It's still playable, however, uh, most of the players don't go for that variation. Magnus likes the solid center, d3, just setting up the, the very solid pawn structure. Uh, and now the knight can be taken. And then this pawn is hanging, uh, black not gonna get the pawn back. This is why the main line is b5. Now we have bishop b3 and what black would like to do now is exchange this bishop. But the problem is the knight at the same time defends uh, e5. So first we have d6. Uh, and now knight a5 of course is the... Is the, is the main problem here, so white has the move uh, and plays a4. We have bishop d7, now bringing the bishop to this diagonal, uh, which is pretty much, you know, the main idea here, uh, and now c3, because the knight can jump to, to a5, this is what uh, actually Ariantari played, and now the main line here is bishop c2, bring the bishop uh, to this diagonal, continue the game, however, Magnus Carlsen deviates like always and he played bishop a2 but it's nothing new because he played that and um, against couple of opponents and the most famous game maybe in the database is against ding liren where ding liren played b takes on a4 and now what is the idea this pawn gonna be lost um, de definitely however white needs couple of moves to get so the bishop for example have to you know um get get this pawn and black has a time uh, to improve the position as well uh, and in ding liren game we had knight b to d2 making a space for the bishop um, and then after castle bishop b1 and then bishop b5 so that's idea uh, is also uh, pretty nice because after bishop c2 this knight can just retreat to b7 and with the idea of going to c5 and now white has to make a decision because this pawn cannot be taken because this pawn is hanging central pawn so that's not the greatest idea this is why magnus played c4 but leaving this pawn behind um, and that means uh, of course the bishop has to retreat uh, the, now white can um, get the pawn back uh, but then knight can come to c5 okay and after queen c2 a5 just controlling uh, b4 so b4 cannot be played actually to uh, to kick the knight so very nice outpost for the knight, maybe not perfect, but um, this game ended in a draw. So Magnus Carlsen versus Ding Liren, uh, this is one of the continuation. But the more orthodox way to play this is c5. And um, this was played plenty of times, but I hope you already see uh, what is the idea uh, and what is what can be, you know, potential um, drawback about that, um, that position. And yes, you are correct, d5. This is a huge gap, huge hole, which white want to exploit for the rest of the game. 
And now what are the resources to defend or attack the, the d5 pawn? From the black side, definitely light square bishop, that's the that's number one. And also this knight is already controlling um, d5. So white needs a couple of moves actually to get there. Um, and it's not that simple. Also, this knight, you know, cannot, could potentially uh, maybe somehow find the way to defend the, the d5. But in the in the game, of course, it's it's not really possible because it's just too slow. Uh, Magnus went for bishop g5. In the right moment, he just want to exchange this bishop for the knight. For now, it would be too early. Uh, we have castle, knight b to d2 with the idea already with bringing the knight to d5. Very simple plan uh, and we can learn a lot from that because, you know, simplicity of these ideas is like very, very thematic and um, definitely everybody should know that. We have rook b8 now, so uh, b takes on a4 is the is of course the, the threat because now the, the pawn on b2 is hanging. So Magnus decided, okay, you move your rook from the a file, maybe I'm gonna play on the, on the a file, that's the idea. And here is the one of the critical moments of the game because black has to be very careful now. Knight c6 is actually recommended, knight c6 plan is recommended. In the game we have rook e1 uh, and now knight c6 should be played. Why? Uh, because if Magnus now follows his simple plan, then this knight can retreat to e8 or even better knight h5. And now this bishop has to do something, uh, can retreat to, to e3. Uh, or to c1, but that's gonna be a pretty much bad bishop, so probably just exchange. And after queen e7, this knight can actually jump to f4. So uh, white would have to play g3 uh, and then knight f6. So if you have knight on, on e8, white would have uh, another move to play, but now at least uh, this, this g3 move is done. Uh, so what can happen is knight e3, bishop e6, and as you see, there is a lot of control uh, over the d5 square. Even in the right moment, this pawn can be pushed. Uh, however, Ariantari went for b4, uh, making a hole uh, also on c4. And Magnus said, okay, this knight maybe cannot defend um, d5 now, now, but maybe in the future, why not? What I want to do is uh, exchange as many pieces as possible and just, you know, stay with a couple of pieces which can exploit this d5 weakness. So how to do that? Uh, first exchange this knight, maybe it's in favor of black a bit, however, in the in the long term, not really. So we have knight c4, a bishop takes on c4, b takes on c3, b takes on c3, queen c7, queen c2, and this position, when it was reached, Vladimir Kramnik said that if he plays this position as black, it's 60% and he was the world champion, and that he gonna lose that game, okay? And... Uh, he doesn't see, you know, much counterplay and how to handle that position as black. 40% that he could maybe defend it, maybe he could find the, the resources, but unlikely. Now, what is the, the idea? Ariantari tries to exchange the bishops. Uh, he has a choice, bring the bishop, for example, to c6 to control the, the d5. Maybe it would be the, the better option. However, this bishop is still very strong on this diagonal. So he exchanged this bad bishop for, um, not really bad bishop, but for, for this good bishop. So we cannot blame, uh, blame him for that. It doesn't change much. However, he's gonna have less and less pieces to control d5. So uh, maybe bishop c6, but it doesn't change the situation uh, much. It just makes, you know, the position, the ideas for Magnus Carlsen to execute easier. So we have bishop b5, rook b5, at least the rooks can be, can be double now. Uh, and now bishop f6, eliminating the last defender of d5. Uh, we have bishop f6 and now simply following the plan. What is the plan? Bring the knight to d5. So we have knight d2, we have queen c6 now preparing d5 because if these pawns are exchanged, then of course that's not gonna be, uh, you know, anything to exploit now on the, on the d5. 
we have queen a4. So now d5 is not possible because the queen is guarding the, the rook. So white would simply win the pawn for free. This is why rook f to b8 and now saying, okay, now I'm gonna play d5. But Magnus again goes for knight c4 and still d5 is not possible. Let's see why d5, knight a3, now the, the rook is under attack, so uh, rook goes to the 6th rank and after exchanging white again wins the pawn uh, and this uh, past pawn uh, that's gonna be the you know protected past pawn are uh, gonna win the game so that's not possible bishop e7 over protecting the the d6 now as ariantari see that his activity not gonna work he has to you know get a little bit passive position and now magnus uh, once he got this this position where he is much more active he's the active side of the of the game he simply play g3 we have queen c8, we have queen d1, now uh, remaneuvering the queen to the king side, maybe h5, maybe f3. Maybe f g6 is played just to control the, the h5, also making a space for the king, uh, and also potentially this bishop maybe could come to, to g7 uh, just to protect all the squares around. Uh, but still, this pawn gonna be, uh, you know, still behind as a weakness. So uh, it's very difficult for black to make the, the moves here. We have king g2 and now bishop f8 following the plan. Uh, and now queen f3 saying, uh, okay, you can play, you know, bishop g7, but then your pawn is hanging. Uh, and if you don't play that, my queen uh, have the gap on f6. So how you gonna, um, you know, handle that position? We have rook b3. So Ariantari uh, see that if he is too passive, that's um, not possible to play. So he counter attack. Magnus just defend. Uh, and now we have queen e6 defending uh, d6 so the bishop can potentially uh, come to g7 but now rook a7 uh, so already exploring black's position uh, ariantari blocks it and magnus said okay i'm gonna exchange your rooks that your rooks are double on the b file and now i'm gonna enter the game and uh, where i'm gonna enter maybe uh, on the eighth rank maybe on the seventh rank maybe on the sixth rank and this is like you know poor security guy in some stock where you have, you know, a lot of uh, chiefs who want to steal something and he still have to, you know, protect all these squares, entry squares, uh, and it's not possible for one single rook. If he's the queen over there, that would be the possible, but rook cannot do that. Uh, so Ariantari tried to find the, the way on the, on the king side, h5. Uh, we have rook a8, now enter the point, and now king g7, because the, the bishop, of course, is pinned, so king g7 unpinning, and now Magnus said, finally, I set up my pieces in the places I want to, uh, you know, put them, the queen is perfectly placed, and the rook is perfectly placed, it cannot be catched there, uh, and now it's time to bring the knight to my d5 square as black pieces are completely passive. Look at this bishop. What is going on with the bishop? The queen also is a babysitting uh, d6. Uh, and the rook is the, the best piece here, but it's still, you know, uh, cannot do anything as the king is a very, very safe piece over there. So we have knight e3 with the idea of knight d5, of course. And now this is another critical moment um, for Ariantari. This is his last chance uh, to save the game, probably save the game, with the move queen d7. And the point is, after knight d5, uh, rook a7 would be a bit too early, because if uh, actually rook e7 is played, we have a checkmate, so uh, that's not possible. King g8, and after that, we would have a checkmate. So first bishop e7 would had, be, had to be played, but after Magnus uh, h3, g4, g5 idea, uh, then rook a7. And this rook um, has to be exchanged. If it's moving, then uh, the rook only, you know, follows uh, and so on. So rook a7, queen a7, and this is the position which Ariantari could actually reach. However, he plays rook 
c7 with the idea of exchanging the rook this way however as i said this is you know like the security guy try to catch the rook um, and it's not even possible look at this knight d5 we have rook c8 and this chief just say uh, rook a7 hey you cannot catch me okay catch me if you can so uh, rook b8 getting back to the to the game on the on the open b file however magnus now uh, continue his plan so what do you think magnus played he plays h3 so his pieces are placed perfectly and now what white needs is to take control over f6 so the idea is simple g4 g5 and now play um, over the f6 square uh, so we have rook d8 now trying to exchange the rooks this way uh, g4 h takes on g4 h takes on g4 and now rook d7 and this nasty rook says again you're not gonna catch me boom we have rook a8 and now g5 is coming now how to defend uh, if you move bishop to e7 the problem is rook e8 and this bishop guards nothing it's pinned and the queen has nowhere to move so if black would like to make a space um, for the queen the most logical option uh, queen h3 there is the checkmate on h8 and the game is just lost the best move uh, for the uh, in this position for black is actually bishop h4 sacrificing this queen and then the bishop and not much can be done here and uh, if g5 is played is slightly better but still the position of black would be hopeless knight d3 uh, with the idea of checking now from f5 so king g8 but then knight f5 is coming anyway and this knight is a beast over there okay black can try to you know uh, counter in the center but it doesn't really matter queen h3 uh sacrifice um, on 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 f8 is the is the way to go with the checkmate um, idea on h8 it can be stopped with the with the queen maybe to f6 but then the rook gonna come for example to e8 with the attack and all the position gonna collapse it's impossible to defend that so this is why we have f6 ariantari tries to something else it's not really taking under control g5 this doesn't work because after uh, g5 which magnus plays uh, this actually cannot be taken because we would have um, a checkmate of course here so that's not possible but rather f5 and at least this pawn cannot be taken uh, and pass out uh, but still we have queen h3 we have now rook f7 defending this bishop otherwise this sacrifice is still um, on the board so defending that bishop and here is the moment where you actually can pause the video and find the way to win as white it's not difficult because uh, the most obvious way you can grind and win that game but you also can find the spectacular way the beautiful tactic uh, which can be played and the game can be won and Magnus Carlsen as you can imagine uh, choose this you know fancy way of winning that position so uh, once you pause the video I'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so if you want to win just you know a normal way you would play something like queen h6 uh, very obvious move king g8 and now you can win this you know many way what you can find fancy here is actually knight c7 with the attack on the on the queen deflection if the rooks move then of course we're gonna have a checkmate on f8 so the queen would have to be moved and then very simple queen g6 winning this pawn and that's also wins the game after rook g7 simply exchange all the pieces the knight can jump back to e6 win the rook exchange everything just exchange everything there is no uh no any other moves and then just simply e takes on f5 this two pawns uh, creates the wall and this of course is completely winning for 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 white the king gonna come um to to e4 then exchange these pawns these two pawns gonna be exchanged for these pawns and these two pawns at the end gonna win the game there is no other way so congratulations if you if you found it but magnus went for rook e8 the rook sacrifice and now look at this you have to take the the rook if you don't if you play something like queen d7 then you have queen h6 of course this pawn is not defended now uh, king g8 is only one move queen g8 
and now if rook g7 then we're gonna have knight f6 very nice uh, move and after king h8 uh, rook f8 and uh, and yeah, this is, I think, the only move, and this is the checkmate. So that's one way, and if king h8, then still knight f6 is still the way to go. There is the checkmate on g8, um, and if the knight is taken, then we have another one, queen f6, king h7, uh, rook f8, and there is the checkmate, uh, this is the checkmate, the only way black could eventually uh, prolong it, then, then that, that's the way, queen f5, uh, queen g6, and after uh, queen h3 with check, uh, queen h5, this of course is also uh, a checkmate, so queen h6, that, that would be the very nice symmetrical way to deliver a checkmate. So queen e8 was forced um, but now of course we have queen h6 and eliminating this pawn uh, king g8 is the only move queen g6 and now it doesn't matter what black plays um, if the rook goes to g7 then we're gonna have knight f6 and it's not winning the queen but it's rather checkmating king h8 and after uh, queen h6 then of course that would be the, the checkmate if bishop g7 it also doesn't work for the same reason knight f6 and uh, now winning the queen and if it's um, not won then actually can be won this way rook can uh, retreat of course uh, but then still queen e6 uh, king h7 e takes on f5 and this pawns again gonna gonna win the game there is no way uh, to actually save the game the queen gonna come for example to g6 um, and then the, the pawn can be pushed and of course the, the game is completely won so Arian Tari went for king h8 and Magnus Carlsen believe me or not play the same move knight f6 it's win with everything and uh, in this position Arian Tari resigned and he resigned because the queen gonna deliver a checkmate on g8 not much can be done about that a bishop g7 doesn't work because the rook controlling h7 uh it doesn't work so queen h7 uh rook f6 it's not only losing the queen because now the rook is trapped so the rook gonna be taken for free uh, that's another um, idea here. Bishop e7 controlling g8, controlling h7 is not enough because a queen h6, and of course the only move is uh, is this one. So that's also the checkmate. Uh, so yeah, that's what we have in this position. Ariantari resign. Uh, very thematical game, you know. Good knight versus bad bishop. This is what <laughs> Ariantari uh, said in the interview. Also, I'm gonna leave the link. Uh, you have the link over there. Uh, for for this interview um, and yeah if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and uh, if you don't want to miss another content on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one